بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الرحم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. First I congratulate you for the birth anniversary of the Prophet and Imam Sadiq and I hope that inshallah we would be blessed in this day and night uh, with more lights and more ma'rifah inshallah coming to us through the Prophet and the Imam Shah. As you remember we started the discussion about mental existence al wujud al dhihni and we already uh, had some discussion about it. The idea is that whenever we know something our knowledge of things according to philosophers is something that relates to our mind and what is in our mind has to correspond to what is outside of course there are other theories about truth but the most uh, you know acceptable theory and the one which is accepted by Muslim philosophers is correspondence theory. It says that what is true has to correspond to the external or objective reality. So if in my mind I say or you don't need to say it, you know, you form this judgment that A is standing it's in your mind. If in the real world also A is standing, then this is true. But if in your mind is A is standing and in the real world A is sitting, this is not true, this is false. So that image that you have in mind should correspond to the real world. Muslim philosophers have, and theologians have had different ideas about how to explain this. For example, a famous theologian uh, who has been very critical of philosophy and raised lots of questions against philosophy is Fakhru Razi, Fakhru Din Razi. And he is called Imamul Mushakkakin, <laughs> the leader of those who doubt. raise doubt. Yes. He's not just Imam Mushakkakin, Imamul Mushakkakin, so he creates doubts. <clears throat> but uh, Ayatollah Mutahari says his critics of philosophy has actually helped Islamic philosophy to grow because when Muslim philosophers were faced, were faced with these questions and doubts and objections in order to defend philosophy, they had to develop their ideas further. You know? Yes, Tafsir al-Kabir. You know, when you are in a situation that everyone uh, appreciates you, and praises you, then there is a chance that you may become lazy. You may become, you know, just relaxed. Because no one is challenging you. Whatever you say, they accept. So it's very good that you have also people who challenge you and question you. Okay? Of course, they shouldn't do it too much because then it can, you know, totally <laughs> this, you know, make you not able to function and, you know, that can da damage your confidence. 
you know, if someone is not well established and too many questions, like for example, a new teacher or a new leader of the community, a new alim, for example, a resident alim, if too many questions, too many objections, you know, that person can never function. But a healthy criticism is good. You know, healthy objection is good. A balanced criticism and praise is very good because you understand that you have some strong points and you have also some areas that either you have to correct yourself or you have to present yourself better or you have to understand better, you know. So, the objections helped philosophy to grow. Anyway, Fakhr al-Razi, when it comes to knowledge, has the idea that nothing comes to our mind when we know an objective reality, you know. For example, I see you today or tonight, okay? I know you exist. Salam alaikum. I know you exist, I know you are listening carefully, and these are things that I know. Fakhr Razi says, when you know these things, nothing has come to your mind. So that we discuss whether what is in your mind in correspondence with the reality or not. He says, Al-ilmu huwa nisbatun. He says, knowledge is just a matter of relation. I have now a kind of relation with you, or you can say a kind of encounter if you like, but it says nisba, relation, encounter. This relation is knowledge. If you were not here, or I was not here, or I was, you know, looking at the wall behind me, I didn't have that relation which we call knowledge. So, according to him, nothing is in my mind. It's just the relation between me and you. Okay? This was his idea. And there are many other ideas that, inshallah, we mention gradually. But Muslim philosophers, especially people who follow Mullah Sadra, they are very clear that we have images in our mind. And these images may correspond may match the reality outside or may not match. If they match, they are true. If they don't match, they are not true. Okay? So, there are few arguments in the book for proving that we have mental existence. al wujud al The first argument When you make a judgment in the sentence, you say, Zaydun Qa'imun. Zayd is a standing. Okay? How can you say that a standing is a quality for Zayd without you conceiving Zayd? It's not possible. You must have something in your mind about whom you bring the predicate of a standing. Or, for example, you say a mountain of gold is heavier than a mountain of stone. If you have a mountain of gold and the same size stone. You know, when we were children, uh, uh, one question was, is one kilo iron heavier or one kilo cotton? Mm -hmm. same. Did you have the same question? Yeah, it's the same. But just the volume is different. Yes. So, m many people think one kilo of iron is heavier than one kilo of cotton. Cotton, yeah? This one. <laughs> but one kilo is the same. But here the question is not one kilo, it's the same size. One mountain of gold 
and one mountain of stone. Which one is heavier? Gold is heavier. So, if you say one mountain of gold is heavier than your one hill, for example, is heavier, you have to be able to conceive these things in your mind. There must be an existence for them somewhere. Outside, we don't have mountain of gold. So, then how can you talk about this? It means that you have to have the ability of having an image or concept of this in your mind. So, any judgment that we make about a subject and predicate, whether it be affirmative or negative, salibe or mujibe, shows that they are first in our mind. Or, for example, you know, sometimes we have concepts in our mind and we use them as universal concepts kulli. for example you talk about human beings in general not a particular human being you are not talking about Zaid or uh, Hassan or other people you are talking about human beings in general like Al Insano for example hey one not this Al Insan as a universal concept does not exist anywhere in the world because what we have in the real world in the objective you know external world we have instances of human being you don't have kulli of human being you know universal human being outside anything which comes outside has to be individuated but in the mind we have kulli or for example, serfoshe, you know serfoshe, a concept in its simplicity. For example, just whiteness, whiteness, Salam not white paper, not white dress, not white plaster, not white uh, dress. Just whiteness. Do you have whiteness in the external world? No. In the external world, we have whiteness always with something. We cannot have whiteness, you know, as such. Simply whiteness. So, when you talk about whiteness, it means that there must be a realm in which this concept exists, and that's mind, because it cannot be outside. Serfoshe. And if you remember, one of the arguments we had for Tawheed was Serfoshe la yatathanna wa la yatakarrar. If you have just existence without any addition, without being combined with anything, it cannot be two or three. Serfoshe. Okay, after bringing these arguments, now let's see what problems have been mentioned, what objections have been raised against this issue. There are several problems, but uh, in the book it says the most important problem is the problem of bringing two things together, which seem to be contradictory. Are you uh, attending, listening, yeah? yeah? From one aspect, we said whatever is in our mind should correspond to the reality that it represents, it reflects. For example, if I have an image of a human being, I have an image of a horse, a flower, image of my car, my house, okay, my book, that image should be image of that thing. So image of my car is different from image of your car or image of my car is different from image of my book. Yeah, every image is 
identical with what it represents. So if it is a Johar, then that image to correspond to that Johar should be Johar. If it is Araz, it has to be Araz. Then among Araz accidents, we have nine types of accidents, yeah? Kam, Kaif, Mata, Ain, and Yaf'al, and Yanfa'il, Izafi, Jeddah. You, you know these things. So, on the one side, this knowledge that I have, this mental image that I have, should correspond to the realities, and realities are different. They belong to different categories. <coughs> Gens, fast, are different. On the other hand, Philosophers say, or most of the philosophers say, you know, like Muslim philosophers, they say that the knowledge that you have in your mind is a quality for your mind. So your mind is like a substance, your nafs is a substance, and this is a quality, kaif, a you know, psychic quality for your nafs. So the question now is, how we can put these two together? One thing, this mental image in the one side is if it is, for example, for human being, it's haywan and not there. If it is, for example, a flower, is something else. If it is a, I don't know, a quantity, is something else. If it is, a, for example, uh, quality, something else. So there are different possibilities. But on the other hand, because it is knowledge, and knowledge is always kaif. It's a psychic quality. It's an aras, an accident for the soul. So which one we should accept? If we want it to be true, it has to correspond and match the same categories that these things belong to. But on the other hand, it's knowledge, and knowledge is a quality for us. So the problem is two categories would be applying to the same thing. Your knowledge of the book has to be a book, but at the same time has to be a mental image which is a cave. Book is not a cave. Book is a johar, is a substance. This is a very important problem. If you want to understand this problem, you can go a step by a step. One a step is that whenever we have knowledge, something comes in my mind. There is something in my mind. We are talking, of course, about Elm Husuli. I don't need to repeat that this is about Elm Husuli, not about Elm Huzuri. Elm Huzuri, what is known is present to the knower. It is Al Elm Al Husuli, which is Huzur al Surat al Ma'lum Lada al Alim. Not Huzur al Ma'lum Lada al Alim. Yeah? Al Elm Al Huzuri, knowledge by presence, is the presence of what is known for the knower. But Al-Ilm Al-Husuli is that the concept, the image of what is known is present. Okay. So the first step, something is in my mind. Fakhr Razi, to stop this problem, attack the first principle. Nothing is your mind. You know, we were talking that what is in my mind, you know, has to belong to two categories. Fakhar Khazazi says, don't worry, there is nothing in your mind. Your mind is empty. <laughs> okay. So, this is one way of solving the problem. But this is not acceptable because you know that you have images in your mind, you have knowledge in your mind. And also, if you say knowledge is only relation, so what about the relation with the things that do not exist outside? For example, something which is universal, doesn't exist outside. Something which is negational, doesn't exist outside. Something which is simple, basit, self, 
We don't see it outside. So the idea of Fakhr Razi is not acceptable. The other thing is the idea of Fazil Qushji. Fazil Qushji or Qushji in Arabic, because in Arabic there is no Che. Yeah. Fazil Qushji is a Sunni scholar who is a Mutakallim, and he has a commentary, a famous commentary on Tajreed of uh, Khajir. And because you know, Tajreed is a book that has been uh, received very well by Sunni and Shia. There are tens of commentaries on Tajreed al Etiqat. The one that we read in the Hosea is Kashf al Murad by Allah Mahalli, but there are many, many other, you know, the commentaries. Fazal Qushti says that. When something is known to us, please listen carefully uh, so that you can understand. When something is known to us, it means that you have an image of it in your mind. That image is identical with the external reality. It belongs to the same category. But that image has a kind of shadow, makes a shadow, a mark on your mind. That is your knowledge. If you want to understand it better, imagine you have a crystal Uh, container. You put something in that crystal container and then shadow of that appears on the surface of crystal. Knowledge is that shadow which is Kaif and Afsani. But that object which is in crystal can be an apple, can be a piece of wood, can be a piece of stone, whatever it is, it's different from Kaif and Afsani. So he says, you have something in your mind and you have an image or a shadow of it, which is your knowledge. And this is Kaif and Afsani. So, he accepted that something is our mind, but tried to say that there are two things, not one thing. Because the problem was how one thing can be both Kaif and Afsani and at the same time belong to the same category that that objective reality has. But this is not acceptable because we believe that there is only one thing in our mind, not two things. So, just to clarify, so you yes. see, there's two things in our mind. One is the actual <coughs> image which corresponds to reality, the actual true knowledge. Uh, and the other thing is like an imprint or a shadow of this, which is what we perceive as our knowledge. Yeah. So there are two things, the reality and what is our knowledge, which is basically... Not the external reality. No, no, not the external reality. Yeah, an internal reality, an image and the shadow of it or imprint of it on your mind. This is not acceptable. The other idea is, again, which is not acceptable, they say, no, there is something in your mind, unlike Fakhr Razi. And there is only one thing in your mind, unlike Fazil Qushi. Okay? There is something in your mind, unlike whom? Fakhr Razi. And it's only one thing in your mind, unlike Fazil Qushi. But they say there is a transformation. Transformation takes place. When something is outside, it belongs to different categories. You have a horse 
which is Haywana Sahil. But when horse comes to your mind, is transformed into Kaifa Nafsan. So it's no longer a horse. But then the problem is how do you then explain truth? Because it has to correspond. If you say it's no longer a horse, then why you say I know horse? So you don't know horse, you don't have any idea about horse. This is the idea of Sayyid Sad Ashirazi, Sayyid Sadruddin Ashirazi, not Shahid Sad, this is before. Sayyid Sadruddin Ashirazi, which we don't accept. Is he called Sadrum Tarin? No, no, no. Sadrum Tarin is not Sayyid. It comes later. Then, Muhaqqaq Dawani. Muhaqqaq Dawani also has another idea. He says, there is something in your mind and not two and no transformation because those who wanted to transform they say everything becomes kaif and afsan he says no everything remains what it is outside there is no kaif and afsan so the problem of how something can be kaif and afsan and another thing he solved it by saying it's not Kaif and Afsan. It's only the same thing which is outside. So if you have an image of flower, it belongs to one category. If it's an image of, for example, a bird belongs to another. Uh, of course, these are going back to Johar. But for example, if you have time, you have quantity, like line, like uh, dot, all belong to different things as outside. Inside, there is no Kaif and Afsan, which is wrong. Because if this is kefen, no kefen absent, then how can it belong to me? The final answer is the answer that Mullah Sadra, Sadra Muta'allihin Shirazi gave, Rahmatullah Alayh. He says, something is your mind, and it is only one, and it's not transformed because it has to correspond to the reality. It's not also something which is not a, a quality for me. No, it's a quality for me, at the same time corresponds to the uh, you know, external realities. Then you may say, how? How something can be done too? Then he introduces a very, very important distinction. If you can make this distinction, then it means that you have good chance in studying philosophy. If you don't make this distinction, then what? Pardon? No. It means, it means it's too early to say whether you have chance or not. <laughs> and still you can be hopeful. <laughs> okay, but if you make the distinction, I can say you have chance in philosophy. He distinguishes between two types of haml, which is haml abwali zati, or in Arabic, al-haml al-abwali zati, and haml shai sanai, or al-haml shai as sanai. Haml abwali al zati and al shai as sanai. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean? Sometimes you talk about something and you are only concerned about it as a concept. But sometimes you are talking about something and you are concerned about it not as a concept, as what it refers to. For example, If I say al juzi you know, we have every concept is either kulli or juzi, universal or particular. You know, what is juzi? Yeah, what is particular? <coughs> the technical meaning of juzi is what? 
it's a concept that cannot be applied to more than one case. Yeah. Ma yam tani'u sidquhu ala kathirin. Al-juz'i ma yam tani'u sidquhu ala kathirin. Something which is impossible to be applied to more than one. Because it cannot be applied to kathirin, to many. It has to be applied only to one. Okay? Is vajibul wujud kulli or juz'i? Hmm? The concept of vajibul wujud is juz'i or kulli? Who says kulli? Who says juz'i? I think it's, it's, it's neither. It's neither. No, it has to be either juz'i or kulli. We don't have. It's block and block. But it can't be juz'i. It's not a particle. It's a Why it's not juz'i? Al kulli ma la yam tana'u sadquhu ala kathiri. Kulli is the concept that is not impossible to be applied to many. Juz'i is, impo uh, is possible. Uh, sorry, is impossible uh -huh. to be applied. Yeah, Josie? Mm -hmm. It's only Jose. possible to be applied to one. Yeah. Holy yes. can be applied to many. I see. So it must be Josie. Ah. Wajibul wujud is kulli. It's kulli. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because the concept is kulli. Then you have to prove that this concept has only one instance. There can be kulli which has only one instance. There can be kulli which have no instance. <laughs> yeah? There can be a kulli which has no instance. Yeah. So, you have to be careful. It's not that anything which has only one instance is juz'i. Mafhum wajibul wujud is kulli. Anyway, al kulli wal juz'i, yes. Because you can have many, many cases, you can imagine of many cases that this concept can be applied to them. The concept doesn't show any individuality. The concept of wajib wujud. But the concept of infinite. Like the concept of khaliq. The concept of khaliq doesn't show by itself that it has to be one. You have to argue for it. Yes, but the concept of infinite. Actually, uh, you a study in logic and philosophy that actually no concept is juz'i and the only way something can become juz'i is when existence is involved because wujud is mutashakhis and brings particularity otherwise concepts are all universal even those concepts for example that you think they are kulli sorry they are juz'i they are kulli it's only wujud. For example, you say, there is one chair. How many people can sit on the chair? Only one. But you may say, the person who is sitting on the chair. This is not Josie, this is Koli. <laughs> only one person can sit, but which person? If you say a man, not a woman, a man who is sitting on the chair, it still is Koli. A man who is 30 years old who is sitting on the chair, still it's kulli. A man who is 30 kilo and, uh, I don't know, t uh, 30 years. Anyway, anything you add, still it is kulli. Because adding kulli to kulli would not make it juicy. Just can narrow it down. Okay? So, mafhum wajib al wujud is kulli. Anyway. This is uh, something that, inshallah, you will. Uh, Can you give me some example of Josie? Uh, Josie? Yeah. Like you, me, mm. this uh, mobile, this book, this dress, this desk, these are Josie. They, they cannot be applied to more than one. The image that I have of you can only be applied to you. But the image of humanity that I have can be applied to many human beings. The image of book can be applied to, but this book, the image of I have that this book can, can only be applied to this book. Okay. The image of God, we cannot apply to anything but God. So how can we say it is not just...
Yeah, but you can't implement religion. But, but you have to prove, you have to bring extra proof to show that God can only be one. The concept by itself does not show whether it is one or two or more. You have to prove it. Okay? You have to prove it. So, Al, pardon? The concept has the potential of being applied to any wajibul wujud that can exist. Okay, the concept. But if wajibul wujud can only be one, then you have to argue for it, and still the concept remains kulli. Because there can be many kulli concepts that only have one case outside. Okay? For example, when you say my father, let me make it like this. My father, is it Kulli or Juz'i? It's Kulli. My father, because father is Kulli. My father is Kulli. Any man can be applied to him provided that he has a relation with you. It's a Kulli that has only one case, but what is that case? It can be many. You have to then, like for example, I say, there is a student here. He's a student. A student is Kulli, although I am saying this man is a student. A student is Kulli. Even if you say a student, a still a student is Kulli. And if a, a student was not Kulli, you could not say a student. Can you say a Zayt? You cannot say a Zayt, because Zayt is Juz'i. When you say a student, is Kulli. You can say a student, two students, many students. So a student is Kulli. Sheikh student is Kulli. Yes. But when you say a student, doesn't it make So a student is Kulli. Yeah, but when you put the condition of... That means, means one case of this Kulli. When you say a student, it means one case of this Kulli. Yes. So, since we were at the point, I just would like to ask the how, how do we explain the concept of infinite and infinite existence, which is what we as infinite? Not as Sheikh Khalif or as God. Uh, I mean, specifically, but as infinite, limitless being. Because why, as a concept, it seems you cannot have more than one. Uh, it is unlimited. No problem. So, how do we. So, in, in the real world, it cannot be more than one. But the concept is Kulli. Al Mutanahi or Allah Mutanahi. The concepts are Kulli. Yes. Like the example of my father, can we say that Wajib al Wujud um, can be <coughs> anyone who possesses these characteristics, but now we specify that this God which has created this world is the Wajib al Wujud. So, so this God then is different from Wajib al Wujud. This yeah. God means that you are pointing at a being. So that, that is the Jews. Yes, as I said, wujud always makes it particular. Wujud, because wujud has tashakos. Anything that exists is one. Remember this from me. Okay, so if you are asking grave, remember this. <laughs> Anything in the real world is juz'i. In the real world, is juz'i. We don't have kulli outside. But concepts in mind are kulli unless you attribute them to a juz'i. Like I have an image of you. Because of you are juz'i, I think that concept is also juz'i. Otherwise, the concept by itself is kulli. Yes. What's the um, essential definition for wajibul wujud? Necessary being. A being that by itself has to be there, has no equal relation to existence and non-existence. It's a type of being. So we can say, this is what needs to be, this is what needs to be, this is what needs to be. This is what needs to be. This is what needs to be. So it can be applied to many things, but when we specify the one, yeah. then that's just the one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
الجزئي ما يمتنع صدقه على كثيرين or you can say a particular is what cannot be applied to more than one okay do you accept this sentence a particular is what cannot be applied to more than one okay but we are, you are juz'i, she is juz'i, he is juz'i, I am juz'i, this is juz'i. So we apply juz'i to more than one. You said juz'i cannot be applied to more than one, but we have many juz'i, so we apply juz'i to many things. That's the concept of juz'i. We have real juz'i and we have concept of juz'i. Real juz'i, al juz'i bil haml al shay'i sana'i, cannot be applied to many. And actually, that juz'i cannot become even a subject for the sentence. Yeah? Me and you cannot become the subject for a sentence. But the concept of juz'i. can be used as a subject. The thing is that the concept of juz'i is kulli. <laughs> if someone, you know, listens us and says, these people are, you know, crazy. <laughs> they say juz'i is kulli. <laughs> but we are not crazy. This is the reality. Because the concept of juz'i is kulli. Yeah? Because it can be applied to many things. The concept of juz'i is kulli. So, sometimes you are talking about juz'i as a concept. Then it is actually kulli. Sometimes you are talking about instances of juz'i. Al-juz'i bil haml al-shayr. Then that cannot be applied to more than one. Okay? So, whenever you have an image in your mind, sometimes you are talking about what that image represents. For example, I have an image of a rose flower in my mind. Okay? I have an image of a rose flower in my mind. This image of rose flower, is it a rose flower or it is a quality, a chafe, which is one of types of aras for me? Is it a rose flower or it is a chafe and afsani? When you think of rose flower, is this image of rose flower a rose flower, which means it's a johar, which is, you know, jism. Therefore, it's a jism, and it has hayat, jism nami. Rose flower is a joharon. Qabinul al-abad salasa nami. Or it is an e uh, image which is a qu quality for my soul. Knowledge is a quality for the knower. So is it a rose flower or is it an image, image for me? We say both. It's both. Because if it was not rose flower, then how could I understand rose flower? You know, scientists write books about things without bringing those things in the book. Imagine if a person has written a book about ants. Yeah, there's a book about ants. Do you find ants in the books? In that book? Or no? No. It's just written. Ah, we say, if you mean the external ants, real ants, they are not in the book. But if you mean the concept of ants, yes, this is full of ants. 
Because they're all talking about ants. Because the concept of ant reflects ant. Reflects. Ant. Reflects. But itself is not ant. It's a concept. Yeah? Yes. The concept of cake is a cake. You cannot say the concept of cake is not cake. So if, if it's not the concept of cake, then why you say it's cake? Yeah? When you are thinking about cake, are you thinking about cake or about something else? Yes. You are thinking about cake. Yes. So it's the cake. Yes. But at the same time, it is not cake. It's the real. <laughs> so, pardon? So we say there are two aspects. It is a cake in the sense that this is an image of cake, not image of something else. But it is not a cake because this is an image. This is a cake for Nafsani. This is not an object which occupies, you know, a space. It's three-dimensional. So you have to distinguish between these two. So cake for Nafsani means an image, is it? Pardon? Cake for Nafsani means an image. Yeah. So it, image is a cave and afsani. Cave and afsani means uh, uh, even fear, hope. These are all cave and afsani. Any quality that is for your soul, any psychic quality is cave and afsani. So Mullah Sadra said that when we know something through El Husuli, our mind has an image of that thing. That image by itself, if you look at the image itself, is Kayf and Afsani. If you look at what this image reflects and represents, it represents different things. It can represent a human being, it can represent a horse, it can represent a flower. But when it represents something, it represents that thing. Not that. It can only represent Kayf and Afsani. It can represent a Jawad, it can represent uh, Cam, Kayf, all nine accidents and Jawad, which means ten categories. Is it clear? This is why they say that Ma'luma Bizzat, that image, is primarily known to us and what is known through it which is the real thing outside is secondarily known to us when i look at this book what is primarily known to me is the image of the book in my mind which is present for me as an image but through that I come to know about the external book. So this is Ma'aluma bil Aras. This is second really known to me. And what is in my mind is primarily known to me. If these two match, this is true. If they don't match, it's false. So Mullah Sadra has developed this idea, this beautiful distinction between two types of Haml. Al-Haml al Zati and alhamdulillah shayru sana let me give you another example maybe inshallah your uh, question can be answered and if not you can ask me question for example we say al ma'dumu al ma'dumu la yukhbaru an Non-existence cannot be talked about. You cannot inform about non-existence. Non-existence is non-existence. You can only talk about something that exists. A shay, al-ma'dum, al-mutla, something which is absolutely ma'dum, not, for example, adamu shay'an. If you remember, we said adamul muzaf, means adam of something which has existence, then there is distinction. Remember we talked about Yeah? 
But if it is absolutely Adam, you cannot, you know, talk about it. You cannot think about it. But then a person says, the very fact that you say al ma'adumul mutlaq la yukhbaru an contradicts what you say. Say why? He said because you actually talked about al ma'adumul mutlaq. You say la yukhbaru an. This la yukhbaru an is khabar for al ma'adumul mutlaq. When you say you cannot talk about ma'adumul mutlaq, this by itself is a talk about ma'adumul mutlaq. The same thing we said about al juz iyo. What is the answer? Uh, here we are talking about the concept of ma'aduma mutlaq. We are talking about ma'aduma mutlaq bil hamla al awaliya zati. Otherwise, the instance of ma'aduma mutlaq. You cannot talk about it. So we use the concept of ma'aduma mutlaq to explain the situation of real ma'adum mutlaq. Okay? Or well, for example, you know, I say, fire cannot come to my mind. Then the person says, okay, this fire is now in your mind because the mozu is the subject of this sentence and the sentence in the mind. Say, what I say, when I say fire cannot come to my mind means Real fire, Belham le Shire. But the concept of fire is not fire. Although it is the concept of fire. <laughs> so the concept of fire is the concept of fire, not the concept of water. But the concept of fire, although it's the concept of fire, is not fire. Okay? That's right. What does it mean that the we are thinking about the fire is when the fire we are starting to make the mental image of the fire? Yes, but but you don't bring fire into your mind. Fire doesn't come to your mind. But you are able to think about fire. You are able to discuss fire. But real fire, no. So what is amazing is that our mind, when talks or studies or analyzes fire, it's fire, not about something else. But at the same time, it's not fire. Do exist or do not exist when we are thinking about fire? You know, we are, we are thinking something. It's not, it doesn't mean that it do not exist uh, in our mind. It yes. does not exist in experience. So, so fire, bil hamla means instance of fire, is not in your mind. But fire, bil hamla awali the concept of fire is in your mind. But this, this type of existence is wujud zahni it's not real existence. So this is why when you think of fire, you would not, you know, be burning yourself, for example. You can think of fire, even a very big fire, and feel very cold. Yeah? You can think of food and still be hungry. Actually, the more you think about food, the more you become hungry. Yes? Uh, someone raised it. Okay. So, this is the distinction that Mullah Sadra makes between two types of ham. So, Going back to the question that how something belong to two different types of categories, for example, although they are all, you know, distinct from each other, we say it's not really a matter of belonging to two categories. One is belhamla awwali one the other is belhamla shaya. That knowledge that we have, that mental image that we have, that concept that we have, it's kayf and afsani because it is a kind of aras that happens to my soul, to my mind. <clears throat> like, you know, when you are happy, what is this happiness? 
It's a quality for your soul. It's a condition. It's a aras. It's not joha. It's a quality for your soul. When you are fearful, that fear is kaif and afsani. Elm is also kaif and afsani. A quality for the soul. Someone doesn't have elm, so it doesn't have this quality. But on the other hand, this kaif and nafsani can reflect different things. It can reflect johar, it can reflect uh, cam, cave, different types of aras. So when it reflects, belhamle avvali falls under those categories. But like belhamle shaya under always under one category, and that is kaif and nafsani. Okay, so all the images, you know, like for example, if you have photos, if I have a, it's very simple, I, I don't think, you know, it's difficult to understand. If I have a photo of a car, a photo of water, a photo of flower, each photo shows something different. Photo of car, photo of flower, photo of water. So if I ask, show you, you know, photo of water, I say, what is this? You say water. If I show you photo of car, I say, what is this? You say car. But then, if I say, what is this photo in itself? You say it's paper. I say it's paper. So it's a paper, when you look at it as a being, but it can be a car, it can be flower, it can be water, when you look at it in its reflective aspect, the way it represents something. Okay? So these things that we have in our mind are like paper, a photo, they are all similar in being Kaif and Afsani, but because they reflect different things, they have to correspond also to different categories. But don't tell me, how can something be a paper and a water? I say these are two different things. It's a paper by itself, but it's water as it reflects. Okay? I think it's very easy. It's a humble shy in secondary. Is it humble shy, you say? Secondary in the sense that you are going to the instances. Sorry, Chef, you said you cannot say it is water. It is a big picture of water. Yeah. So there, there is yeah. this specific... But it's a picture of water, but it's water. I, I say, what do you see? You see water. You don't say, I see a picture of water. Actually, I you say, see I see water. No, I see, I, see, I see a picture of water. Yeah, Even if I, say I, see I know, water. of course. Uh, this is why when, I, when we have fire, yeah. we said this is not real fire. Yeah. But I'm saying that it's so much... Uh, reflecting that you may even forget that you are looking at the picture and not the real thing. Yeah? So, if I say, is this picture of water or, picture, for example, something else? You say, no, definitely water, not something else. Yeah? But sorry, Chef, by identification, by real identification, we wouldn't say this is water. We would still say, I mean, if you go deeper, we would say, well, this is a picture of water. Yeah. If you ask us what's this exactly, we wouldn't say again, this is water. No, we would say this is picture of water. <coughs> so, I mean, we wouldn't, the, 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 uh, we wouldn't say water only. Yeah, but then if I ask you, describe, look at this and describe what you see. Do you describe paper or you describe that thing? Yes, of course, we, describe, we say water, yes. yes. Yeah, but I mean, we cannot say this is water and paper. This is yeah. So, from one aspect, it's paper. From another aspect, is water. That aspect, which is paper, is regardless of what is shown. Whether it is water, whether it's a human being, whether it's a car, it's always paper. But that is not very important for us. You know? You are not interested in the being paper. You are interested in what is shown. Yeah? When you buy pictures, you are interested in what is shown. 
Otherwise, you would have uh, purchased plain paper, em you know, white, <laughs> empty paper. Why you buy pictures? Why you buy postcard? Why you buy postcard? Because of what is shown. Okay? Question? Yes. You have also a question? Okay, one, two. Okay. Uh, if we don't have the reality of the external, uh, if we don't have the external reality in our mind, then how can we understand it? How can we know it? How can we know it's true? And hence we have all these different answers and then all of a sudden But here, we're saying that we have a paper which reflects water. But the reality of water cannot be in our mind again. Exactly. Which doesn't it raise the same question again. That if you cannot have the reality of water in your mind, then how can you understand the truth of it as an outside existence? By correspondence. When you look at picture of someone, you say this is so and so. Is it true or false? It's true. But mind is better than paper. Mind so beautifully reflects that you don't sense there is separation. You know, when I look at you, I think I'm seeing you. But in reality, I am not seeing you directly. There is no way for me to see you directly. What I am seeing is image of you. And through that, I am understanding you. Is it clear? But it's so nicely done that mind disappears. I think I am seeing you directly. I'm not thinking of mind or images. Yes. My, my question is similar, but uh, for example, I do not, I do not know if I apply to this term, but like, it's possible that the, the, the image, the brain can trick with the, the, the image, because sometimes they are like, we are seeing the image itself, it's clear, but the inside the concept is, is very confused, like for the, the famous exams of the psychology that uh, is a shape of or a jar or two people uh, and inside of us we do not know what is what is that indefinite and we have to reach a conclusion even if it's wrong uh, it's possible for this type of um, yeah so many times that image can be wrong, doesn't correspond. So this can apply for this type of concept? Yeah. So, El Muhusuli, we always said that it's subject to mistakes. If that concept corresponds to the reality, it's true. Otherwise, it can be mistaken. Okay? Okay. Alhamdulillah, we finished uh, this discussion. The next discussion is about... Yes. Is this question about seeing something directly or through a image? When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Him, is there a distinction, is there a level that you can reach where some sort of veil is lifted, where you have some sort of direct yeah. knowledge? Yeah, yeah, you can have Ilmu Huzuri of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, how, would, how would that work? So many times mystics have immediate understanding of God. In the same way that you understand yourself, you can understand your creator. Because according to especially Mullah Sabra's philosophy, the relation between cause and effect is very, very intimate. So the cause can have knowledge by presence of effect and effect can have knowledge by presence of the cause. But for cause, the knowledge of the effect is perfect. For effect, the knowledge of the cause is limited. Yes. Is, this, is this what we refer to as One meaning of Laqa'ullah can be this. So that would mean Laqa'ullah is possible in this world. In this world, yeah. when Orafa say Laqaullah, they mean this. But when Quran talks about Laqaullah, means resurrection, means bath. Yes, normally.
Sheikh, I'm finding it difficult to find to distinguish the difference between Faisal uh, Koshi's uh, understanding and Mullah Sadra's. Faisal Koshi? Yeah, maybe I got Faisal Koshi's one wrong. Faisal Koshi says Shaba. Yeah, he, he says Shaba means like a shadow. Mm. He says there are two things. The object which is in the crystal container, the object, like, you know, uh, a human being, you have image of human being. He said that human being is the object, then shadow of it is reflected on mind. We say, no, real human being should be there so that we can develop knowledge of it. And it has to be also one, not two. Very okay. subtle. Pardon? Very subtle. Yes, very subtle. So I think we've done chapter 10 Yeah, I want to give you a little introduction. I don't study completely the next lesson, but as usual, I give you a little introduction. Number 12, chapter 12, is it? In Farsi, chapter 13. In English? Chapter 12, I think. Unity of the what, Noor and what the What is Noor. the title? Noor, Unity of the Noor and the Noor. No. Before that is sec secondary philosophical. Uh, that, that's yeah. 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 What what is the title? Secondary uh, philosophy. Eleven. Yeah. What, what's the title? Secondary, secondary philosophical, philosophical concepts. concepts. Yes. So Just concepts. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We have not reached the uh, element of for Allah's So what we know of Allah is an image, and whatever image we have is not really Allah. Because Allah cannot be limited to any sort of It's image of Allah, but it's not the same as Allah. Not that it's not Allah. It's not the same. It's and not it the same. It cannot be the same because it's yeah. the same yeah. So where does that put us in terms of servitude? Because we, we don't even uh, have that uh, capability yet. You don't need to have uh, al-muhuzuri of Allah to serve him. Actually, to reach that level that you have al-Muhuzuri, you need to serve him. <laughs> like, for example, you have something in mind that you are looking for it, you, you know, go everywhere to find it, but because you have an image of it. But when you see it, you find it, then you have better knowledge. But you had Ijmali, you know, a kind of partial knowledge, limited knowledge that Help, helped you to find it. Okay, a very important discussion in Islamic philosophy, which unfortunately has been missing in some other philosophies and has created lots of problems, is this lesson. In Farsi, 13, in English, 11. Okay? It's not that 13 in Farsi means 11 in English. <laughs> 13 in any language means 13 and 11 means 11. But because they have merged. So, we have different types of concepts. <coughs> this is very, very important distinction that... You know, in philosophy, you have to be able to make these distinctions. Because if you don't make these distinctions, then everything for you becomes similar. You know, those who are very philosophical in mind, those who are very sharp in their mind, when they see something, then they can quickly make lots of distinctions. When they hear someone said something, they can make lots of distinctions, you know. Otherwise, you can have very simplistic approach. One of the distinctions that Muslim philosophers have made very well is the distinction between three types of concepts. Al-ma'gulatul ula al-ma'gulatul thaniya al-falsafiya al-ma'gulatul thaniya al-mantiqiya we say ma'gulat al-sani falsafi, ma'gulat al-sani mantiqi, ma'gulat ula. Ma'gul, ma'gul. So you say thaniya or thanawiya? Thaniya. Because in Arabic usually you say thanawi. You can say thanawi, but in Farsi we say thaniya. Okay. But you can say thanawi in Arabic. 
معقول is different from معقول when we are talking about categories that is معقولات معقولات without عين معقول means ما يقال what has been said معقول means ما يعقل do you understand the difference اسم مفعول فران قال يقولو is معقول معقول اسم مفعول فران عقل يعقلو is معقول is it clear معقول means what is said ما يقال في جواب ما هو categories are what is said in response to the question what is something in its essence Anyway, that's ma'qul. Don't get it confused with ma'qul. Ma'qul means what is understood. Uqila. Uqila means understood. They mean by these ma'qulat concepts, in some books they translate it as, they say, intelligibles or intellected. They can use different equivalents. Sometimes they are just primary, first, not secondary. Like the concept of human being, the concept of water, the concept of horse, the concept of elephant, the concept of flower, the concept of stone. These are called al ma'ulat al or the primary, the first concept or intelligibles. You have something outside in the real world, you develop a concept of it and you apply it to it. Okay? Where is water? Where is human being? Outside. So you take the concept from outside and apply it to outside. But sometimes we have al ma'ulat thaniya al mantiqiyya or thanawi al mantiqiyya. These are logical concepts, which are secondary, because you don't have them outside. You have to reflect on the first and primary ones and come up with this. For example, you say al-kulli, mafhum kulli, al-mafhum al-kulli is something that does not exist outside. It's only in the mind and can be only applied to the things which are in mind. You can have mafhumul and sound, but you can apply it to the things which are outside. But al kulli cannot be applied to something which is outside. And then you have al ma'gulatu thanawiyatu al falsafiyya, which are in between these two. And this is amazing distinction that Muslim philosophers have worked out and is helping you understand many things in philosophy, in ethics, many cases. And that is where it is applied to something which is outside, but it is not added to it externally. Okay? You know, al ma'gulat al was about outside and it's applied to outside, but it's in Zen. It's ma'gul, it's concept, it's Zen. But, for example, when you say something is haywan, something is nautil, something is uh, white, something is black, something is soft, something is hot, all these concepts are about outside. If, if for example, heat is added, it becomes hot. If softness is added, it becomes soft. Okay, so the realm of that mafhum ma'gulat ula is outside. The realm of mantiqi is mind. But al ma'gulat thaniyat al falsafiyya they are applied to something which is outside, but they are not added to them. You cannot point at them. For example, al imkan. You say zaydun mumkinun. Imkan contingency. 
Emkan is not like being hot or being soft. It's not a quality or a property which is added to it. You cannot say which part of it is mumkin. This is very important distinction. I will, inshallah, discuss this uh, again. You know, just one, wanted to prepare your mind. Hopefully, you would have chance to read the text and be ready because this is very important discussion. And inshallah, if you understand this, it helps you in many future studies. Uh, it can be accidental, it can be Johari. <laughs>